Hi guys, Action 007 Cinema here. Warning, spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a 2019 Argentina crime and thriller movie called 4x4. A petty car thief tries to rob an ordinary looking car, but unbeknown to him, it's a customized torture chamber designed for thieves like him. Who may be the mastermind behind that high-tech car? And what will happen to the unlucky thief? Let's find out together. The story begins with a man named Ciro Bermudez walking leisurely while observing the situation around his targeted car on a hot afternoon in Argentina. A 4x4 SUV parked in a deserted area becomes an easy target for him. Although it looks suspicious, for Ciro, this is a golden opportunity that doesn't come twice. It didn't take long for him to break through the door and take the car tape. Like many other thieves who have got the loot, Ciro decides to leave the vehicle immediately. But unfortunately, he is unable to leave the vehicle through the door. Every door in the car is already locked by someone he doesn't know. Even if he tries to break the door and window with his anger, there is still no way out from this car. He tries to scream as loud as he can and bangs on the windshield to call out the passers-by. But it's all useless because the windshield is too dark so people from outside can't see inside the car. In the middle of his panic, he takes out his gun and shoots the windshield. But unfortunately, it is bulletproof glass, causing the bullet to deflect and hit his thigh. Ciro immediately makes his Boca Junior jersey into a temporary bandage. Ciro, who still hasn't finished with his lousy day, just runs out of his phone battery when he tries to contact his wife. After so many questions about whose car he is in and the purpose of making a car with absolutely no gaps, he decides to spend the night in the car. After a night spent in the car, he is awakened by the pain that does not go away. He collects the dew that forms on the surface of the window to be used as a drink to quench his thirst. He also put back the car tape he wanted to steal earlier to get some entertainment. But suddenly, a man's voice appears in the middle of the song. Someone is calling him from two-way radio communication. It's Enrique Ferrari, an obstetrician who owns the car. He tells Ciro that there is no way out from that car, and also, he has planted a bomb on the car gas tank. And then, he continues his explanation about the reason for designing the vehicle so that people who enter it cannot get out easily. It is his revenge against the 29 cases of theft that he had experienced so far. For him, the police never took care of it properly, to prevent theft cases from happening again. But Ciro, fed up with what he has been through, bluffs on Enrique with death threats to get him released immediately. Enrique, who thinks that Ciro doesn't understand his situation, decides to end their conversation and lower the car AC temperature to increase the torture level. Ciro's survival instinct told him to put his Boca Junior jersey back on and replace the bandages with torn pieces of his jeans. Not enough to reduce the cold, he covers the AC hole with everything he finds in the car and uses the car carpet to protect his body from the cold. When Ciro sees a policeman approaching the vehicle, he tries everything to notify him of his whereabouts. However, Enrique has also prevented such a thing by installing heavily tinted windows on the car. As a result, the police immediately leave the vehicle, after only giving a ticket because the windshield is too dark. Ciro, who is starting to get impatient with the thirst he feels, is helped by Enrique's incoming call, telling him that there is car glass cleaner water in the back of the car. Without any hesitation, Ciro immediately drinks it until there is nothing left. He no longer thinks about the health consequences after drinking it. All he needs now is a thirst quencher. The next day, Enrique calls again, telling him unimportant things that Ciro doesn't want to hear, just as usual. But Ciro, worried about his gunshot wound, prefers to ask for his advice as a doctor. Enrique, who knows how bad Ciro's wound is, increases the AC temperature so he will not catch a fever. But it also makes Ciro even more dehydrated and frustrated. Although Enrique intends to torture Ciro until he refuses to live, he understands that if Ciro dies too quickly, it will only reduce the period of torture he suffers from. Enrique prefers to kill him slowly until he begins begging for forgiveness and rendering him helpless. Amid his dehydration, he unconsciously tore the paper from the car manual book as his food. He tries so hard to swallow it, so he no longer feels hungry. Unlike yesterday, when he still got water, this time, Serum needs to collect his urine as his drink. Disgust is no longer his primary issue. 
In Sierra's mind, all he needs to do is try his best to stay alive and wait for a miracle that might come. He feels even more helpless when a teenager who wants to steal the car where he is being held is caught by local residents. The story continues when night falls. Sierra begins to sink into frustration and obscurity. He no longer pays attention to Enrique's incoming call because he knows answering the phone will not help him at all as he just continues muttering incoherently about his childhood. The following day, Enrique calls again and gives Ciro exciting news. He tells Ciro to get a pack of cakes near the handbrake. Even if it's just a little, for Ciro, the cake is enough to regain some power. When he feels he has enough energy, he continues his efforts to escape by making a hole in the door using a piece of iron. Who would have thought that his effort paid off? A small hole formed, but that's where the luck ends for today. His lend voice can no longer be heard by an elderly man who isn't far from the car. Soon after, Enrique tries to bluff on Ciro by saying that Enrique came to his family. Ciro, who is helpless, tried to call his family again after replacing the phone battery, which he put under the sun yesterday. Fortunately, Ciro is able to connect with his family even just briefly before his cell phone runs out of battery again. Realizing that his death is getting closer, Ciro runs out of enthusiasm to get out of the car and just falls asleep. In his sleep, he dreams that he managed to escape from the car. Even though he finally wakes up, Ciro never expects that his dream to get out of the car will soon come true. He, who is ready to end his life with a gun, is suddenly stopped by an incoming call from Enrique. This time he comes to Ciro and brings a cigarette and chocolate peanuts as Ciro's last meal. But Enrique underestimates Ciro too much, who he already thinks is completely powerless. Enrique, who begins to be distracted by incoming calls on his cell phone, is surprised by a gun fired at his face. Ciro takes this opportunity to run away and look for help. He doesn't have enough time to escape and is shocked by Enrique's grip, who he thought was already dead. The bullet he fired only injured his right cheek. But Ciro's efforts are paid off when a policewoman who isn't too far from them realizes Ciro is in danger. Despite being ordered to put down the gun, Enrique doesn't listen to the policewoman and tells her to leave them. The story continues with many police and local residents surrounding Enrique with a weapon that pointed at Ciro's head. The sheer number of cops doesn't frighten Enrique at all. All he wants is to make Ciro pay for what he has done. Things get a little better when a mediator from the police, Julio Amato, arrives to negotiate Enrique's. Although it looks impossible, Amato seems confident in his ability to change Enrique's opinion. Trying to mediate, Amato begins to tell the story of his father, who died as a homeless person, which he regrets until this day. For Amato, taking revenge never brings back anything that had gone. Likewise with Enrique's actions, which will never benefit either party. But the turning point that changes everything is when Amato says that Enrique will only be remembered as a murderer who took revenge on the criminals. Hearing this, Enrique begins to waver about his own choices. For him who experienced injustice a couple of times, it is only natural to kill the criminals who have harmed him. But in the end, Enrique chooses to follow Amato's advice. Enrique slowly started to release Ciro from his grip and let him walk towards the group of police. But when everyone feels that this incident is over, no one expects that Enrique doesn't want to give up yet. For Enrique, who has already gone this far, dying is the best option he has, instead of spending his old days in prison. He enters his car and immediately activates the bomb in his car. It doesn't take long to detonate and startle the crowd. Everyone who is gathered that night perfectly understands how Enrique feels, someone who is just seeking revenge on a troubling thief. For some people, Enrique is a heroic figure who finally appears to represent a vengeance they could never have done before. Although in the end, the heroic figure chose to end his own life rather than the thief he held captive. Well, that's how the story ends. It may sound silly, looking at how far Enrique is willing to cross the line just for petty car theft. But we never know how those petty little things will affect others. Sometimes even the wisest dragon will show its claws when frustrated. What do you think of Enrique's action? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching, and as always, see you next time.